Okay, it's Mark from Lightmap, and let's look at HDR Light Studio Carbon's new render view in detail. So we'll press the start button. We can see that uh, there's a hook detected for the Octane Sun Sky. This demo is going to be with Octane Render. So we'll press OK, and HDR Light Studio will start connected with Maya and Octane. Okay, let's go here and make sure that always on top is selected. This means when we press the play button in this new render view, then Maya won't um, take focus and go in front of HDR Light Studio. So we'll press the play button. This will start Octane Render inside of Maya, rendering interactively. And there we can see the view. So this new view has settings under the render view settings. So here there's a drop down and the render view for these settings is HDR Light Studio. If we click the drop down, we get Maya Octane. And we can see that the image width and height that's been shared with HDR Light Studio is actually 1920 by 1080. So if I change the render view from fit to 100%, we actually view the image at 100% that is being shared with us from Maya and Octane. So in this case, if I fit this to the view, we're rendering an image that is the entire size of this screen and then we are squishing it into this view, which is very wasteful of resources because when we're uh, doing an interactive lighting session, we really don't need that excessive resolution. So in this render view, we have a little button in the corner and this resizes the interactive uh, resolution to fit one-to-one -one the size of this view. So when I press this button, it will actually change the render resolution of the renderer to match this view. So I'll press that button. Now you can see the resolution is 966 by 499. And if I change from fit to 100%, you can see that the scroll bars only come up when I change the size of the view to be smaller. So it's actually uh, fitted this view to be that perfect size. So that's what this button is for down here. So the top bar in here is the same actually as HDR Light Studio's own render view. We have a click and a drag button here where you can keep your finger on and you can drag and change the exposure of this view, or you can type in an exposure. We can look at different channels from the image. Uh, by default, it's the full color image, the HSV, uh, but we can look at, say, the red channel or the value. So we get a black and white image showing the brightnesses in the image. Um, most useful, of course, is the final image, the HSV. We have a LUT control. The image shared with HDR Light Studio is linear. Uh, it's high dynamic range as well, which is why we can properly change the exposure. But in order to display this in HDR Light Studio, it needs a LUT, and this is automatically set to sRGB. But if you've uh, got your own OpenColor.io settings, uh, you can change this to whatever you want because we've implemented OpenColor.io inside of HDR Light Studio for some time now. If you want to change the camera, we get a list of the cameras that are in Maya, and we can change the camera view as well, and then it will uh, start interactively rendering a different camera view. But let's change that back to the perspective view from before. Okay, so now to the tools down the left. So if I just create a light, by default, the tool that's active in the view is the light paint tool. So if I click on the view, it will move the light to reflect in that position because the light paint mode is set to reflection. If I want to put the light directly behind the shot, I can change it to rim mode I click in here and that light will move behind just like so. And if I use the illumination mode where I click, the light will illuminate that position. It won't necessarily be reflected in that position. So this is better for diffuse models. Most of the time I use reflection mode. If the scene that you're lighting is animated, you can type in a frame number here and you will go to that frame inside of Maya and you will see the correct frame number. If you want to pause the rendering, you press the pause button. We can then make changes to the lighting, add new lights. And then if we press the play button, the render will be restarted and will resume. 
If for some reason updates stop in this render view, you can force restart and resync up this view. It will resync all the cameras. So if you've made some changes in your Maya scene, it will uh, resync the camera list and it will restart the rendering. So if I press the resync, we'll see that this uh, restarts the rendering. There we go. Just onto some additional render view settings for this view. We've already looked at the render view, whether it's 100% or it's fitted. If I use fit and I make this view smaller, it will always fit to the view, but it won't change the actual resolution that it's been rendered at. It just squishes it up and uh, we can then view the image at 100% as well. And we'll get scroll bars if it's any smaller than the view. We can turn on and off the logo, which represents the renderer, which is currently uh, working to make this view. And then we've got the refresh rate. So the default for this is a thousand. That means that this image updates once every second. Uh, if we make this say a hundred, it will update 10 times per second. But with that comes more of an overhead of the communication between HDR Light Studio and Maya and Octane. And we feel that a reasonable refresh rate is a thousand. So if I move a light here, then I wait a second to see that. Let's just try putting this at 100. So that's 10 times a second. And really the lag that we've got, you can see here that there's a little warning triangle come up. And that's basically saying for the amount of times we're asking for an image, we're not getting them back. So we are polling too quick for this uh, system to actually get those updates. If I put that to 500, then we can see there that actually those two lights are indicating, this one's indicating that we are asking for an image, this one's indicating uh, that we are getting an image. Uh, and everything's happy because we don't get the little warning uh, triangle. But really, for most work, there's no need to go faster than getting an image every second. If I was to go across to this view and press play and import my model into here, the advantage of HDR Light Studio's render view is that I can click and I can drag on the model to discover the sweet spots for lighting. Now, inside of this render view, uh, you can click only, you can't drag on the view. Um, because the round trip, you know, in terms of if we were to stream uh, the data across um, to Maya and Octane as you are dragging, that's just an incredible amount of information to keep streaming across and it wouldn't keep up. So it's really only sensible to uh, have clicks for light paint when using this render view. Um, you might also notice that when the render view is not being shown, it will automatically pause rendering. So at this point in time, that rendering is paused and I can move some lights and let's say I make this light really bright and change its color. And then when I click back, you'll see it takes a moment and then it will update because it's resumed rendering when it's displayed. So that's nice to know that if that view is not being shown, it won't be rendering. So that's the overview of the new render view that works with 3ds Max and Maya in HDR Lite Studio Carbon Release.